In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Do you know the greatest prayer in the world? Do you know it? The greatest prayer in the world is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. By far, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest prayer underneath the sun and the sky. It's the bridge that unites heaven to earth, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Do you know? the primary purposes or ends of the Mass. Best way to understand it is through the acronym of A-C-T-S. Let's start with the A. Adoration. Primary purpose of the holy sacrifice of the Mass is to adore God, to praise God, to worship God. If you like, here it is. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. That's called the doxology, in which we're offering God the Father. Rather, I'm say, uh, rather, we're praising God the Father by the offering of God the Son and through the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the doxology. You should have sang Amen, called the great Amen. It, that should have that should have shot the roof off your house. So adoration is the first and primary purpose of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Adoration. We unite, we unite ourselves with the angels and the saints saying, Holy, Holy, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So the doxology and the Hosanna are means by which we are, we are glorifying, we're praising God the Father by the offering of God the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's move from contrition, adoration, to the second. And that would be, I'm going to write it down for you. There we have it. Adoration, contrition. So when you go to Mass, not only do you want to glorify the Trinity, but also you want to be begging mercy for your sins and the sins of the whole world. Telling God you're sorry for the many times that you have offended him but also telling God sorrow for the many people who offend God and they never say, Lord, have mercy. That's why uniting the chapel of divine mercy with the Mass is powerful. In the chapel, you say, Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly, dearly beloved son in, in reparation for our sins and those of the whole world. So begging mercy for our sins, but also not that only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So that's contrition. No better 
no better means by which we can beg God the Father mercy than offering his beloved son in reparation for our sins and the sins of the whole world. Let's move from contrition to the letter T, and that would be, I wonder if you can guess, it is, you got it, Thanksgiving. Adoration, contrition, Thanksgiving. Actually, the word, the word Eucharist, which comes from <laughs> Greek, it actually means Thanksgiving. What do you have in your life that you have not received as a gift from the Father of all good gifts? Think about it. Is there anything in your life that you don't that you have that is not a gift from the Father of all gifts? Think about it. I'll tell you. There's only one thing that we have received that we we have not received from God. We have chosen ourselves, and that is our own sins. When we commit a sin, that we we willfully choose to do something that God, that God doesn't want, but God allows. Why does God allow it? Because God has given us, he's endowed us with free will, with freedom. And God's not going to violate our freedom. He's not going to be coercing us to do something against our freedom. our freedom. So we want to thank God for all that he's given to us. The only thing he has not is our sinfulness. And that's why we have contrition as one of the elements. We should often say, with the psalmist, the antiphon, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. We should cultivate an attitude of gratitude at all times. An attitude of gratitude at all times. So my friends, we've arrived at the last letter of our acrostic here the four purposes of the mass and it would be the letter s and that letter s would be that of you got it is the letter s that of supplication maybe that's a word that you haven't heard too often it's not a very common word that's used in, in a common jargon in modern English in the United States anyway. But uh, to supplicate the verb or supplication, the noun, it basically means this. I'll give you the biblical verse, Matthew 7, verse 7. Matthew 7, verse 7, do you know what that is? Well, I'll tell you. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, knock, and the door will, will be open to you. Whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, the door will be open to him. So another primary purpose of the Mass is we're asking the Lord for certain things that we need in our lives. What should we ask for? Especially that God's will be done, that he will be praised for our own personal sanctification, for the conversion of poor sinners, for the conversion of deathbed sinners, and for ourselves that we would persevere in the state of grace. Now, St. Alphonsus Maria Liguri, one of the great doctors of the church, says this. He says, the grace of all graces is to pray that we die in the state of grace. 
supplication. For that reason, St. Augustine says that all of us, we are all beggars before God. <clears throat> We're all beggars before God. Take Luke chapter 18, the first few verses, the parable of the insistent widow. She kept knocking and knocking and knocking at the door of that, of that unjust judge. And the unjust judge goes on to say that I'll, I, don't, I don't believe in God. I don't even respect people. But I better give injustice to this woman. Otherwise, she's going to end up doing me violence and wearing me down. Take this example. Take this parable as an example for you. If the just, unjust judge is going to help this insistent widow because of her insistence and persistence and perseverance, how much more will our loving the Father give those gifts to those who constantly day and night beg him? So there we have it, my friends. Let's just go through the four words in our acrostic, which explains the four basic purposes of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And they are adoration, the Mass. The Mass has as its primary purpose to adore and praise the Blessed Trinity. Contrition, and that means to beg pardon for our sins, to repair for our sins, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Thanksgiving. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. And supplication, as great St. Augustine says, all of us, all of us are beggars before God. So my friends, remember the acrostic, the purpose of the Mass, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. So don't forget tomorrow, uh, January 22nd, is uh, a very sad day because it was a day in the year 1973, the Supreme Court of the United States of America legalized killing innocent babies. And that's called abortion. So when you go to Mass today and tomorrow, offer your Mass and offer your communion in reparation for all those innocent babies whose lives were snuffed out. And let's pray that one day in this country, we'll, never, we'll no longer have legalized or even carried out the terrible abomination of abortion. May the yes of Mary and the yes of Jesus Help us always to be people of life. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.